Joining me again are newer councilman Ronald C. Rice, Project 21's Deneen Borelli, and Dan Gavey, Executive Director of Excellent Education for Everyone. Could we see more cases like this coming before the Supreme Court, do you think? Uh, yeah, I think um, uh, Justice Kennedy, when he wrote the concurring opinion, actually stated that race could be used in diversity issues citywide in places like Seattle. So I think that while we have a fractured court 5-4 and then a concurring opinion from Kennedy, I think it adds more confusion actually than it does actually settle cases. So I think you're going to see a lot of test cases uh, looking at other means of using race. That people will try to use race in citywide diversity plans. People will try to challenge and see how far they can go, how far uh, that race is not allowed. So I think it's actually not clarifying it, it's actually making it more confusing. New Jersey is one of, the, one of the top five states in the country of being most segregated. So in what ways should districts examine ways to integrate? Well, you know, I, first of all, in my opinion, I think the primary goal here is to educate children. And color coding classrooms and schools is not the answer. Just because you put a black kid with a white kid, it's not going to do anything to enhance their grades. But how do so you when think you, the natural diversity is going to be achieved? They, they can do that by other activities, churches, uh, church events, going to church, uh, school events, uh, sporting events. But again, the, the, the focus here is on kids getting a quality education. And color coding the classrooms is not the answer. It has nothing to do with addressing the child's educational needs. So right. I agree with you with the school choice uh, efforts, the vouchers, the tax credits, and charter schools. That's very important, and it really puts the power back into the hands of the parents. You wanted to add something? Yeah, I, I think we have to recognize the connection between class and the achievement of the children in, in, in the schools. Um, we're, we're not, see, I don't think, seeking integration because we think that a black child can't learn unless they sit next to a white child. You're, you're right about that. That's an insulting concept. What E3 is concerned about is we, we all over this country, su suburban parents who have money have the freedom to leave their schools. And so they're able to apply pressure on those schools. If I have money and I'm unhappy with the school system, I can either move to another district or send my child to a private school. The people running that school know that I have choice and know that I will leave, and they are under the pressure to perform. That's not the case with urban school systems, which are monopolies. They know perfectly well that those children, are largely low-income children, do not have the option to leave. So you're talking school choice, charter schools, those sorts of schools. Yes. What I'm saying is, that if we took a certain number of children who do not have the power of choice because of their low incomes and made sure that they were in schools where preponderant of the parents have the power to keep that school good, those, those low income children would benefit from that experience. In other words, what we're talking about here is the urgency of having high quality teachers in front of low income children. An economic issue and not just one that, of... That does not, that's not race. the case. All over America, the studies have demonstrated that, and I, I hate to say this because there's some wonderful people teaching in, in urban school systems, but they're not at the caliber of teachers that are in the suburbs. And if you don't have a fine teacher, you will not succeed, particularly with children who are coming from difficult circumstances. What will the impact be in the Garden State? Well, if we were to say, for example, that we wanted to, to basically move children based upon their socioeconomic status, and we, and we set a level, you couldn't, I mean, up to, say, 200% of the poverty level, or you have to qualify for free and reduced lunch, and we said those children could take the, the, the value of their education and go anywhere they want it would have a tremendous impact because they would choose better schools. Dan, what would your reaction be? The biggest problem is that, I think Dan said earlier during the break, was that the state of New Jersey has never had a, a, a way of diversifying schools, never had a plan to. Abbott versus Burke, which is to provide a thorough and efficient education in our urban schools, the special need districts, if you will, uh, it's, it's been about establishing uh, good education in those particular districts. But Gary Orfield and Orfield and Hatch have done studies in New Jersey that we're one of the most segregated schools. So even when we're putting more dollars into the system, them and, and dealing with what I guess Seattle and Louisville now have to deal with with socioeconomic ways of, of, of bringing dollars in as, as we call it in the, in, the, in the break it has not led to a diversified community it's not led to uh, suburban communities having more African Americans and Latinos or vice
vice versa in the urban centers. So I think it's, it's, I want education for everybody. I want kids in Newark to learn, and I'm not really, you know, caring necessarily about diversity. I want the best bang for the buck. But if we're talking about diversification, Seattle's efforts and Louisville's efforts have never been what New Jersey has done going forward. And the same question for you, the impact on the Garden State? Uh, I, again, you know, my my primary focus is on kids just getting a quality education and the bottom line is there are a number of uh, public schools that are not making the grade so competition needs to come in they need to either step up or shut down and put the power into the hands of the parents and give them the opportunity and the options to send their, ch their child to the school that will give them a, a, a future thank you so much Next, one student in our area denied access to her school of choice because of race. We'll hear from the family when Real Talk continues. Stay tuned.